welcome to you all on this taster, as Colin has really helpfully described it. As he said, this is about leadership. Action learning is the tool. It's a tool to create a space for something different. One of the uh, pleasures that I've had in working with uh, the facilitators that you're going to meet later this morning, uh, and some of them in a previous group that were uh, learning about action learning and how to use it with people, is that we've been exploring the implications of this word wicked that uh, Colin used. Um, I first cocked my ear when my son used this word wicked. He didn't mean it the same way I assumed to mean it. Um, then when I read this guy Keith Grint about leadership, he was using it again in another sense, which sort of combined the conventional use and the way my son was using it. So I'd like to think with you just for a moment about the difference that we're working with. Critical issues require command. If you smell smoke, holding a committee meeting is not going to save lives. Yelling, get out of here and leave your baggage is. <clears throat> Telling people that we're going to develop a new service without telling them what the constraints on the budget are would be missing out a, com a command issue that's not negotiable. So there's a place for command in every organization. The challenge of leadership is when do we use this and when do we use something else? If we use this in every situation, we're likely to get uh, resistance because people don't feel the autonomy that they want to contribute with. So Grint says, think about tame situations, a word that Colin also used. These are things where we've seen what's happened in a previous uh, iteration. We've done it before, we get better at it. It might be complicated, like heart surgery, or like refueling a plane in midair. But technically, you can get better at it, you can monitor how to improve it. Um, he suggests that's the area for managing. And then he says there's this area of wicked. <coughs> and he suggests that's the area for a different sort of leadership. Because wicked stands for those situations that we haven't seen before. More than any other decade or even year, you and I know that this word has resonance in a way it never did, maybe 20 years ago. 20 years ago, we were much more comfortable to focus on being good managers. Now we face in the headlines every morning. Watching politicians struggle with the unprecedented, economically, socially. You face the community with a challenge to try to get them to take responsibility in a way they've been happy not to over the past 20 years. That's a wicked issue. How do you get people how do you disappoint them at a rate they can absorb? To keep them with you, working on what you need them to be part of. These are some of the challenges of wicked. You know, Aberdeenshire Council can no longer satisfy the expectations of many of its council taxpayers. How do you keep something going with the community you serve? That's part of the leadership issue that a lot of people bring to action learning in practical, small aspects. So what's this tool in which we're trying to move forward 
to face what we haven't got paradigms, precedents, procedures for. Those are the domain of managing, and we do a lot of that. So these three elements call on us to recognize when do we do which? And we're finding, uh, and we're inviting you and uh, really <coughs> acknowledge your interest, because I suspect what I've just said is part of why you're thinking, I might have a look at this, I might try something different. Does that make sense? Would that be valid? That as leaders, not just formal leaders, but considering leadership as a, an activity, not just a role, an activity that everybody needs to contribute to. There's a, a wonderful study of how influential the tea lady was in a social work office. She was the only one who would tell the area manager what other people would tell him. Her influence was quite considerable. Informal leadership needs to start to learn to work, and formal leadership needs to start to learn to work. And that's what we're doing in action learning with one another. How do you get the best out of both? How does hierarchical leadership work effectively with informal leadership? Because neither can hack it alone. How do you keep people with you on issues that people would rather distract themselves and go away and do something that's more satisfying and you can fix easily? So action learning says meet differently in order to get a different outcome. And Rich Revens, who developed it, was an academic consultant back in the mid-1900s. Uh, Sounds like a century ago, doesn't it? Um, after the First World War, he was working with the Cold War, the biggest public sector organization. <coughs> and they were facing post-war uh, challenges that had, ne had never uh, been faced before. And he realized that the current model of bringing in a consultant from an academic institution to analyze what was going on and write a report was an ineffective, inefficient way of getting ownership to change uh, and find new ways of doing things. He actually didn't get published for 40 years because his peers found what he was doing so threatening. He was putting them out of a job. Because his belief was, <coughs> the answer lies with the managers themselves. What you need to do is give them the space in which to utilize their wisdom, their expertise, and share it in a way that can bring about something different. And he created what we call now action learning. Get the managers together, but give them a space away from the onslaught protected space where they can do what Colin was describing. Support one another, <coughs> challenge one another's assumptions, face each other with what none of us as individuals can see as a whole picture. But when we all look at it, we can see different bits of it uh, and see a bit more of the complexity and the contradictions of the whole system. And then we can find a, a way forward, not a, not a solution, not a neat solution, but a way forward that we can test as we go and take other people with us because we're acknowledging we haven't necessarily got an answer. Not on the wicked stuff. So when we meet in action learning, we first start with the question, recognizing we're a group that's building trust, <coughs> that's working in a confidential environment that we agree to respect. Gossip has high currency in organizations, doesn't it? Letting go of being able to say, did you know? Is part of the discipline that we build. Because we want to encourage each other to trust that we can share stuff that we can't in other meetings. Otherwise, we, we wouldn't need action learning. Can we talk about stuff that we can't 
say, at a management meeting for good reasons. You can't walk into a management meeting and say, I haven't a clue how to do this. That's not the place for it. But action learning set is. I'm wrestling with this. <coughs> Can I talk it through? Anybody got any thoughts? And it's not there to advise each other on what I would do so you do it. It's helping each other to build the solution that's right for the problem holder. So when we've connected in response to how are you today, sort of question you don't get in other meetings, and you choose how you want to answer that, then we're going to set the agenda. And the agenda is headlines. What's the menu from the issues that we hold as a group? And when you go into your action learning set, your facilitator will say to you, what's your headline? What's your issue? So start thinking about it. What would you like to bring to the group as a component of the menu for learning, from which the group can choose the one or two that they can work with today? But if you don't, as a group, create an agenda, the facilitator won't do it for you. It's your group. They're your issues. It's the real action stuff with which you learn and you bring it. So have a think as you go through the next hour or two about what would you bring as a headline to offer to the menu. Because then the group will choose which one or two you can work with today from that menu of learning that you've created as a group. So once you've created the agenda and chosen which issues you're going to work with today, and next time you meet, should you choose to continue, the group will keep in mind who's already had a space and who hasn't, so that you get equal access over the time you work together. The first issue will then be presented by the holder, informally, just talking about it for a few minutes, uninterrupted. So we change the format of the meeting to bring about something different. You'll know that when you change something small, Schumacher had a great theory about it, didn't he? You can make quite a big difference. Um, people that experience action learning notice that. So if you change the way you meet to a more disciplined, focused way that feels a bit awkward at times until you get used to it, you can actually get laser type <coughs> focus that helps the group to move forward more quickly rather than just having a discussion the way we normally always have a discussion in which some people dominate as they prefer to, and other people keep quiet the way they prefer to. So there's more participation on an equal level. So uninterrupted, we listen to the issue, and then we pause for a moment, and we hold back the solutions, because we carry the assumption that if we jump in with the solutions that are apparent now, they would already have been found. So we need to understand this issue better before we even go there. So let's, let's get the data that's usually overlooked. What's the feelings about this issue? Just name them, one or two words. Go around the group. I can feel frustration, anger, <coughs> sadness, loss, enthusiasm, commitment, whatever it is. This is data around the issue that you don't normally listen to. And then we move on to questions. And questions are the biggest tool. And you may have a chance with your facilitator to practice doing questions in a, a, a playful way during the uh, second session in the morning. So open questions is the only thing the group can put to the presenter for 15, 20 minutes. That really focuses thinking and listening, just as presenting uninterrupted does. Then we give the presenter a break, because they've been working hard responding to the group and their questions. They sit back, and they become observer to the group. The group treats them as if they've left the room. 
They're listening in, they're watching, but we pretend they're not there. It's quite an unusual scenario. People describe it as very powerful because for that moment, you let go of the issue. It's no longer yours. Have you noticed <coughs> how constraining it is to be responsible? When you can step back from being responsible for something for a few minutes, you actually see it differently. And that's left with the group to create options on your behalf. And you listen in as they create options. And then the facilitator will invite you back in to work with the group to create an action plan. An action plan that works for you. Not anybody else's thoughts about what you should do. And that's quite refreshing. Because there isn't an assumption that there's a right answer. There's only what's right for you in this situation to start moving forward. And when you come back to your next action learning set, you may want to refresh uh, people's understanding of what's going on so they can learn with you about what's worked and what hasn't. And you'll end with a review of the process. Not the content, but this is a different process. So what's worked in the way we've worked differently? We did some very uncharacteristic things here. What's working? What could we do better as a group? So we're keeping an eye on how we do things, as well as the what that we're learning with each other. So that's a, an overview that your facilitator will go into in more detail with you and that you'll experience by doing. Uh, and and that will give you the chance to decide, do I want to work with this group uh, in order to try this out in a way that can uh, pay back the investment? It's an investment. It's an investment that Colin and the senior management team are making in this organisation. Like any investment in a wicked issue, you don't have full clarity on what the payback is. There's a risk. And the reason for the risk is the wicked environment in which you work. Because more of the same is not going to hack it. More and more of us face that every day. So your opportunity to be part of creating innovation, creating new ways of understanding, making new connections across the organization that can't happen in the normal way the organization formally works.